Well, it's been almost exactly a year now since Shannon Gilbert vanished in the reeds of Oak Beach, Long Island. Since then, police have spoken to people in Oak Beach and Gilgo Beach, anyone they think might know anything about this case. There was a man who lived in that community who became an armchair investigator's suspect. Like, this is a person who had history working in, like, the medical field and vaguely in law enforcement, and there were profile workups that the suspect would be somebody in those fields because they'd understand how to dispose of a body and all that. And I remember interviewing him. Tonight, for the first time, one of those men talked to me. He said, no, it wasn't me. I don't know what you're talking about. But so you didn't tell them that you had her in your house, that of you were- Of course not. That's ridiculous. That man is Peter Hackett, a former head of Suffolk County Emergency Medical Services and a former police surgeon who lives near where Gilbert was last seen. Hackett says he never even met Shannon Gilbert. But while he says police have interviewed him about the case two or three times, he would not say what about. And as for the grisly discoveries miles from his home? I can't imagine who would do such a horrible, you know, mean thing. It's just it's beyond it's beyond the you know the level of you know my belief and or i can't even imagine it happening and i saved his business card and his phone number because uh just in the off chance that it was him <laughs> when they said there was an arrest the very first thing I, I wanted to know is was this this guy and it wasn't as her painful pilgrimage continued mary gilbert stopped by the home of dr peter hackett a former Suffolk County police surgeon, the Gilberts claim called them the day after Shannon disappeared. A man identified himself as Hackett, said she was there. So wearing her daughter's sneakers and joined by other family members, Mary came to visit one of the last places anyone saw Shannon alive. Last year, the 24-year-old prostitute visited this house to meet with a client, but was seen running down the front stairs and up the street, screaming that someone was trying to kill her. Police have said the client, Joseph Brewer, is not a suspect. Brewer has not been named a suspect and is said to be cooperating in the investigation. This is what he told us today. Do you, do you know? Prayers go out to the families. I hope they get vindicated. Do you know what happened to Shannon Gilbert? Mr. Brewer. Between Brewer's house and the gate, she disappeared. It seemed ridiculous at the time that they'd found 10 victims and still had not found Shannon Gilbert. And you really felt for her family. Somebody had to have heard, you know, or seen something that night. And for nobody to say anything after a year is just kind of ridiculous to me. He called me on the phone. He told me he went out of his house and that uh, Shannon was there. He went to the off the street and he was trying to help her. Mary Gilbert is somebody who I actually came to know quite well. I have her, I still have her in my phone. Every now and then I run into her, I pass her name looking for somebody else. Uh, and I'll never take it out of my phone because she's a part of my own career story. She was there. Mary was very active in seeking out attention for her daughter and for this investigation. I remember the anniversary of her disappearance. It was a trip no parent should have to take, a visit to the last place your child was believed to have been seen alive. She came back with a lot of family members and so family members of some of the other women also, who they became kind of this, mothers of, of these victims became kind of a sisterhood. At one point, the arrival of Gilbert's mother, Mary, prompted an emotional group embrace all bonded by their shared loss every time I think of my sister I will think of Shannon Gilbert yes. regardless and every time I lay flowers out for my sister I'll be laying them out for Shannon it's you know heart-wrenching to us because we are the families of the Gilgo Beach victims we are also bonded with Shannon's family so it's like Shannon's like our sister and we been every step away with this family since a year and we're gonna to continue to do it. And they supported each other and they they came to the site often um, and, and spoke openly and freely about their losses and about their frustration with the investigation or the lack of progress in the investigation. And we keep these girls out there, the public becomes interested in it. And the public interest is what fuels this investigation. This is not her ending, it's her beginning. This is her legacy. And I remember her looking around, and I remember asking her what she thought looking around. And it was a bright, brilliant, I think late spring day. It was a really beautiful day, actually. But I remember her thinking or saying that it was a really dark place to her. What is it like being here today? <sighs> creepy. It's really creepy. It's not pretty. It's not beautiful. This place Hi. is 
really evil. Oak Beach is this little gated community, and there are a few people who live there year round. And that is where Shannon had her last engagement when someone, you know, hired her off of Craigslist. And so she had a driver who took her to Oak Beach, to this little community. She met with this man. That was the last time anyone saw her alive. This afternoon, Newscopter 7 was overhead as investigators searched a house in Oak Beach, the very spot from which neighbors say Shannon Gilbert was running for her life this past spring. She knocked on the door of a, of a man named Gus Coletti. He was a really nice older man who called 911, but then did not invite her into his house, and she just kept running. She said, help me again, and she just looked like she was spaced out. He called 911, but she would not wait around, tumbling down his front steps and vanished into the weeds. That was May 1st. She hasn't been seen since. I haven't slept in two nights. I could have saved that girl if I didn't know something was going to happen. New developments today in that string of killings on Long Island that have stumped investigators for nearly a year. We've got new information the police hope will help them identify the victims. For the police, they were pretty clear that they did not believe all of the victims were the, the victims of the same person. Well, certainly the investigation has installed as a you can see from today's press conference, we're making progress. I remember being at press conferences and asking like obvious questions like who, what, when, where, why, or how. And I remember it was a struggle to answer just the basic questions. We don't have everything back from the forensics yet. And once we do, then we will sit in a room without any reporters and we will speculate a lot because that's what we do. But it's definitely bigger than law enforcement could handle at the time because they could not answer the basic questions. But you knew that there was more that they probably could have told us at the time that they didn't tell us at the time. And who knows if that could have made an impact sooner in the case. Investigators say they still can't figure out who killed them or even how many killers they're dealing with. The goalposts kept changing, the story kept changing, the theories kept changing, and what they were telling us, it changed every press conference. There was different information, it was very inconsistent. This takes painstaking hours of detective work, forensic work. You do this for long enough, you know, you understand how the police work. The New York Police Department, who we dealt with primarily, they release information only when they feel like they have to. They don't want to release partial information because then when it changes, they look like they don't know what they're doing. And so they're very disciplined in terms of what they allow to get to the public. And this speaks, I think, to the inexperience at this level of the Suffolk County Police Department, which has a lot of really, really great police officers and detectives. A lot of them came from the NYPD, but they don't have the experience covering major cases like this. And, and it showed in terms of how they communicated information. At first, it seemed like there might be two killers, one relatively recent, one on the much more distant past, one who dumped the bodies whole, the other who dismembered them. But now, Police Commissioner Richard Dormer says that theory is out the window. So there were common denominators that point to one person involved in the killings. Serial killers evolve, they change the remos. November of 2011, I had a chance to sit down for an exclusive interview at the time with the police commissioner in Suffolk County, Richard Dormer. And the real question was, was it one serial killer or two serial killers? I mean, how many people were out there? But the theory is now that we're dealing with one serial killer. We have a killer walking free today. Even the wild cards make sense now to detectives like this victim, an Asian male, who'd been dressed as a woman when his head was bashed in. He may have been a sex worker. And a two-year-old girl eventually matched through DNA as the likely daughter of another victim. It's not unusual for a sex worker to have uh, a child accompany them while they uh, visit a client. This investigation started because Shannon Gilbert disappeared. These sex workers that were later found had disappeared prior to that. Their families had been looking for them. Their families had been going to police. And it wasn't until Shannon Gilbert disappeared and her family really started to hold police accountable and say, you have to get out there and try to find Shannon Gilbert. Our theory is that this is a coincidence that she went missing in Oak Beach and has nothing to do with the, uh, the serial killer. Gilbert's loved ones aren't surprised. I've been saying that from the very beginning, her sister told me on Facebook. I told police that Shannon has nothing to do with the serial killer. They should start treating her case differently from the other girls. So where is Shannon? The commissioner admits he's stumped. Ten bodies and no Shannon Gilbert. And 
It's a mystery. Suffolk County Police tonight gearing up for another search in connection with the serial murders on Long Island. I was on vacation and the company, the station, activated my cell phone with international service because we believed there'd be some other bombshell in this case. I needed to be able to make phone calls on it. And I remember hearing that they had found what they thought might be Shannon's personal effects. Jeans, shoes, a cell phone, and a pocketbook with her identification. And I spent like the rest of the vacation on the phone. This is not a result of a new tip. This is just a result of us wanting to research an area that uh, within which she was last seen. We have searched this area before, but again, today's conditions are more favorable to when we searched it in the past because some of the areas are not underwater today. What we found uh, yesterday is very indicative and very supportive of the fact that she just wandered and ran aimlessly into this marshy area. There is something strange about how all of these developments happen on anniversaries, on, on significant dates or around significant dates in this, in this investigation. It's something that, you know, I can't chalk up to anything other than pure coincidence, but it's definitely strange. One year to the day since the realization a serial killer was at work here on Ocean Parkway, victims' family members are making a devastating pilgrimage of their own. I'm so saddened by it. Just reminds me so much of what I lost. To Melissa Can, this hole in the thick underbrush is hallowed ground. It's where one year ago tomorrow, police found the remains of her sister, Maureen Brainerd Barnes. Her body had been lying there, just feet from the road, for nearly two years. It doesn't seem real, like real, real, until you're here and you see it for yourself. And it's just like you're like inside this like nightmare. Today, as family members hold a vigil to remember their lost loved ones, their thoughts are also with investigators who they hope can stop the killer and bring justice to his victims. They're gonna find the killer. He's gonna slip up or somebody's gonna finally not be afraid anymore and come forward. It was on the anniversary of the discovery. It was on the anniversary of the time when they realized they had a serial killer in the first place. One year to the day since this became a major story of global importance, they found Shannon.